by far the best method for increasing your wealth is investing the majority of people never receive high six-figure salaries or large financial windfalls so they must use the stock market's power to increase their wealth it may get in the way of buying and holding undervalued stocks or investing in retirement accounts in other case investing as a place in the equation for your financial development unfortunately a lot of investors from novices to those with a lot more experience make crucial mistakes that limit their ability to make money from investments and i'll share seven investing errors you must avoid with you in this video but before we get deeper if you are new to this channel hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos so without further ado let's get started number one buying shares in a business or sector you don't understand too often investors gravitate towards the latest hot or fancy sounding industry they may know very little or even nothing about technology biotech or the specific business the underlying company operates when making these purchasing decisions without understanding the business that the stock is attached to, they forfeit the advantages they would have had if they had just taken the time necessary to gain more education. As a business owner, you should be able to see trends in the industry in which you are engaged well before the vast majority of investors. For example, if you run a restaurant, you'll be more in tune with businesses involved in restaurant franchising. You also see firsthand and before they become public knowledge, the habits of the patrons. By extension, you will know if the industry is booming or cooling down well before most investors. Knowledge gained firsthand is frequently linked to making money on investments. You risk not comprehending the nuances and complexity of the business in question if you invest in a company that is outside your area of expertise. It's not necessary to be a pilot or a doctor to invest in the airline or healthcare industries, but it certainly wouldn't hurt. You should maximize any potential unfair advantage you may have over the majority of investors. If you're a lawyer, knowing when to invest in companies that generate income from litigation may help you succeed. Number 2. Having too high of expectations most people treat low-priced stocks like lottery tickets and anticipate that they can turn their $500 or $2,000 into a small fortune. When you're getting into investing, you need to be realistic about what you are going to expect from the shares. Such numbers are much more boring and mundane than the pie-in-the-sky levels for which you may hope. When choosing a stock to invest, Consider the performance of the company up until this point and compare it to other investments in the same industry. Historically, has the underlying investment gained 5% or 10% per year or have those moves been closer to hundreds of percentage points? Do most companies in the industry see their shares moving 1% at a time or is it common for them to jump by tens of percentage points instead based on their previous performance? A stock will typically continue to behave largely as it has in the past, and this behavior will typically be consistent with the industry as a whole. When investing your money in stocks, you should also consider the alternative. When compared to a 5% stock return, having your money in a checking or savings account generally means getting almost nothing back as a return, which makes your investing efforts seem much more successful, even if they aren't making you as much money as you would have liked. Number 3. Investing money you can't afford to lose Most people start saving their money and buying stocks as soon as they realize how effective investing can be for increasing their wealth. Sadly, they frequently invest funds that they would otherwise use to pay bills or add to your emergency fund, and it's not a good idea to use this tactic. You will be astounded to see how your trading style changes when you trade with money that you cannot afford to lose. When this happens, your emotions are elevated, your stress level soars, and you end up making buy and sell decisions that you never would have made otherwise. You will eventually lose every dollar you wager, according to an adage in Japanese. Never put yourself in a situation where there is a lot of pressure. Investing only in paper money is one way to practice investing before putting any money at risk. This does not imply that you should invest your $100 bills rather than your pennies. 
It entails deciding which stocks you want to buy and noting your plans to buy them right away. Before using actual money, you can track your investment choices and develop a better understanding of your investment strategy. By holding off, you'll have more time to accumulate cash for investments. You see, you will make much more relaxed trading decisions when you invest with money that you can afford to risk. Generally speaking, if you are not motivated by greed, you will have much more success with your trades. Number 4. Lacking Patience When purchasing stock in a company, people should not let their impatience cause them to lose money. Businesses operate much more slowly than most of us would prefer or even anticipate. When a manager devises a new plan of action, it might take months, if not years, for that plan to start working. Stocks typically take a lot longer to move in the direction you expect or hope they will. Number 5. Relying on bad advice For every good piece of information which may be of benefit, you will probably see hundreds of really horrible pieces of guidance. There is no shortage of so-called experts who are willing to tell you their opinions while packaging them as if they are endlessly correct. One of the most significant parts of investing well is to identify and isolate sources of guidance that consistently help you achieve profits. As an investor, your job is to assess which sources of information should be trusted and which have demonstrated a reliable and ongoing trend of wisdom. Always remember that just because someone is being featured or interviewed by top media doesn't mean they know what they are talking about. And indeed, even if they do have a stellar grasp on their topic, that still does not mean they will be right. If you learn about a stock for free, you can almost certainly assume that its drivers have strong ulterior motives. There are countless dishonest stock promoters in the world. Their obsession is to figure out how to make money off of your behavior. If you hear a professional's opinion on a program like CNBC, this might not be the case. You must realize that investing in speculative stocks is a zero-sum game, which means that for every dollar one person makes, another person must lose. To increase the price of worthless shares, con artists and promoters go to great lengths. The higher the stock prices are driven, the bigger the profit they'll make when they walk away, leaving everyone else behind and bankrupt. Number 6. Investing with the Masses Frequently, the majority of people only learn about investment after it has shown promising results. The mainstream media frequently covers price increases of 2 to 3 times in certain stock types and reports on how popular the shares have been. Recent developments in the stock of recreational marijuana have demonstrated this trend. Even though some of these small businesses only had two or three employees, their corporate worth was still estimated to be around half a billion dollars. In other cases, an old almost defunct gold mine would add marijuana or cannabis to the name of their business, and the shares would go immediately increase in value by a factor of two or three. Investors never dig deep enough into the company to see all the issues. Tens of millions of dollars in debt, no revenues, and millions of ongoing monthly losses. Don't invest like the majority of people because you never know when your sources of information will be too late to help you make a smart choice. Number 7. Succumbing to the Sunk Cost Policy the sunk cost policy refers to situations where people carry on with behavior because they have already expended resources on it. Averaging down results from someone making an investment error and attempting to fix it by investing more money. For instance, if they bought the stock at $350 and it drops to $75, they can buy a ton more shares at the new lower price to lessen the impact of their error. The truth, however, is that the person bought a stock that lost value, and they are now investing even more money in this losing trade. Because of this, some analysts contend that averaging down amounts to nothing more than throwing good money after bad. Remember Warren Buffett's wise words if you feel the need to average down? Stopping your digging is the most crucial action to take if you find yourself in a hole. And that's it for this video. Before you go, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you next time.